I'm Pippa Hale and I'm an artist and I was invited by Rotherham Museums and Archives to come and work with their amazing collection of extraordinary objects of which there are over 100,000 and to work with three front of house staff to reinterpret those collections for contemporary audiences. It's been really about asking questions about who these collections are for, how they relate to people of Rotherham today, you know, what do they tell us about who we are and where we've come from, you know, who, who's represented in those collections and more importantly, who's missing. I work with three front of house staff, Angie, Dean and Zahid, and we learnt all about the collection, uh, how it's stored, how you handle a collection and how you might create new stories out of those collections. So what we wanted to do is create an exhibition that put our front of house team at the forefront. A lot of our exhibitions have been led by our collections team but we really wanted to gain an insight into who our front of house team are. They've got many connections to Rotherham. We wanted to investigate them as individuals, find out what links they got to our collection because our collection is quite varied and then see where that led in terms of kind of communities and what links they had into different communities that we could work with in the future. My role was to have some ideas about what, what, what I like and things that I enjoy. And one of my uh, passions is, is football. I previously used to work at Rotherham United as, as a safety steward. So I had some connections at Rotherham and I was particularly interested in what was at the site of the New York Stadium before the club moved to the site and the site was a the factory for Gestern Crimes, which actually closed in 1999. So the process that, that, that kind of I've been involved with, I've, no, I've never been involved in actually starting a, a project from kind of acorn to tree, from, from conception idea to, uh, to what we see kind of around us now. Uh, so no, I've not, I've not done that before. I chose dogs because we've had dogs all his life through my family growing up and during my married life. We looked through the collections for anything to do with dogs. Quite a number of the paintings have got dogs on, but the main one is of Joshua Walker, who lived in Clifton House. So then that's when I realised the connection with the museum, with Joshua and his dog, and me with my dog. So then I decided to do, after seeing the painting, is have my photo taken in about the same position that Joshua Walker's painting was done with my dog Dexter. So on the day, that we did the photographing for the portrait. We decided that we would get some dog walkers just randomly passing to see if they would do the same pose with the tree and the house behind them. We did really well. We got about 30 people who were very willingly posing for us. So my starting point was ships, trying to look at past interests and stuff that I've gathered over years. I had a ship in a bottle from my gran that passed away a couple of years ago, which means a lot to me. I kind of looked at everything and decided that I wanted to go in that direction uh, with exhibit. So I think it was a really different way of working with a museum team. Usually it's the curators and the collections managers that put on exhibitions. And I suppose I've been invited to kind of disrupt things a little bit to work with the collection and with front of house staff who aren't normally engaged in those decisions and those processes to come up with a new way of working. So having this project was really about kind of testing out a new way of working, putting our kind of front of house team at the forefront of a lot of the work we do, not seeing them as something that's kind of an add-on to the public, but an integral part of the creative process of exhibitions, of community engagement. So personally I've got out of the project was actually uh, how the museum really functions. So I've, I've kind of, we've worked with the archives team downstairs and that's been quite an the, the, the strong room and, and the amount of stuff that they've got. Then we've worked with the collections team and over at Bailey House where over 100,000 exhibits are, are stored. So I've learned about object handling, which we've never done anything like that before. And basically presenting a tour to various uh, community groups and, and, and individuals. I personally got from the project an understanding about the museum team's work. I feel I've grown in confidence with doing the exhibition because I've been took out of my comfort zone dramatically. I've gone years without having a photograph taken or avoiding a camera at any cost to having a six foot photo of me and my dog in the museum for everybody to see. So I think, I don't know, it didn't kill me, so it just <laughs> made me stronger. Before I did this project, I kind of just stuck to the, to the calf. 
didn't pay much attention to anything else that was happening in the museum. Since then, I've been a bit more active and kind of had a, a bigger interest in what's going on. It's just opened up many doors and kind of introduced me to a world that I, I would have never imagined being part of. I suppose this project has helped to deconstruct the familiar ways or the accepted ways in which museums operate. I think there's a real opportunity for museums to become social hubs for their local communities, but these collections take time and they take money to look after. So how do we make them work? How do we make them relevant to contemporary communities in Rotherham today? You know, why, why are they relevant? How are they relevant? And I think that's what this project has done is kind of has reached into different communities that it might not have done otherwise.